I really wanted to explore an issue that's facing society at the moment, which is division, and really see how not just interfaith, but religion as a, as a broad force can really um, contribute towards this. And, and specifically with, with division, but um, the role and the, the effect that the type of dialogue we have publicly, it, what effect does that have, essentially? So, so we, we see at the moment, um, I don't need to elaborate the specific instances, but this year um, it's been very made. It's been made very clear that our society, Western societies, are very, very divided. There's, there's a lot of division. There's a lot of uh, lack of understanding of, of uh, especially on the political, but also the religious and ideological sort of perspectives. And uh, many commentators have said these these uh, divisions have been growing wider and wider over the last um, you know several decades. And um, <laughs> I don't want to really say why this is, because I don't know, but I just want to sort of maybe suggest some possible reasons and really more questions. So one issue that I wanted to um, want to explore is the, the mode of, of public, uh, public dialogue, public consultation that, that we have. So at the moment, the prevailing mode is one of adversarialism. It's you have one or two uh, positions which try to sort of win against the other. There, there, there's, there's violence of public consultation. So that's, um, that, that seems to be a, a very significant factor. And what's been happening, I don't know how much people here use social media, but on things like Facebook, Twitter, and, and also on, a, on, a, on things like, uh, or pretty much anything to do with the internet actually, there are these, this is either called an echo chamber where people see only their own view reflected back at them. And I think also that might be significant for interfaith as well. So how do we not become an echo chamber? And so how do we interact with those whose views are different from us? So that when there is something like a referendum or an election, <coughs> we're not stunned and shocked by the, the result of that. And because our perception of reality is very much shaped by who we interact with and who we're actually engaging with. And and because of that, not just the fact that our perception of reality is skewed, but also our power to influence that reality is also limited severely because we can't actually convince other people. We, we, yeah, we don't know how to do that. If we don't understand what people's concerns are, if we don't understand where they're coming from, what is their perspective, how are we to actually you know, practically engage with them and instead of have an adversarial kind of debate with them, but actually try and convinced through arguments, through, through, through a more non-violent, non-intellectually violent, in fact I like very much the, the Hindu contribution there about that, a non-intellectually violent contribution, uh, way, way of engaging with ideas, that our public discourse is extremely, not physically violent, but intellectually and ideologically violent. It's predicated upon this, this sense of violence, basically. So, um, I, yeah, I just really wanted to say that, is that um, an issue to explore. So an another issue that we need to explore is a different, there are different moral frameworks as well. So this is related to the fact that we will have different, our different echo chambers, but we are also operating under different moral frameworks. We have different things that we consider to be morally uh, irreprehensible and not morally reprehensible and, uh, you know, importance or not important. And once again, if we don't engage in constructive, open, Truly, yeah, truly open dialogue. Then, how are we going to actually understand one another? So, what can religion do as well? I mean, what what does religion? Just not any specific religion, but religion broadly speaking. Well, broadly speaking, religions tend to see human beings as as noble, not uh, not as a you know the economic man who's only motivated motivated by his personal interest, but as a you know a spiritual being, a, a, a reflection of the divine somehow. So that idea is something that if it were to permeate our public discourse, that would actually have a significant effect. We wouldn't necessarily pe see people whose views are different to ours as scum or, or so, you know, lower than us and somehow, but actually a noble being who perhaps sees things from a different way. Perhaps there is something to learn about, learn from their view, perhaps not. But if we see them as a noble being, then perhaps our um, way of interacting with them will, will be different. So those are kind of some, some issues that I was uh, wanting to sort of quickly sort of verbally <laughs> just a brain dump on here but um the, yeah another one is also identity and oppositions as well so quite often we because uh, we identify with uh, i mean as you know adherents of different faiths we we, are, we are do very much identify with the precepts of our faith and people politically as well identify very strongly with the political ideology that they have which is very, yeah which is a a legitimate thing to do. I mean, the women's suffrage very much benefited from people identifying as feminists. That was a very important thing. 
But at the same time, we need to bear in mind that this identifying so strongly with something can make us feel as if if someone has a different view, that's an affront to us, that's an attack on us as well. So perhaps sometimes we need to be conscious of that. It's just a, a suggestion I would have as well. Um, and maybe, although I did say that uh, we, we, you know, we've, we've never been more, what we, we seem to be very divided at the moment, um, our, our societies, but we do. But also at the same time, if you look with a broad sweep of history, maybe things aren't as bad as they have been. You know, several hundred years ago, disagreements were usually solved by duels and shooting one another. So actually, broadly speaking, we have become more civil and perhaps there's more outrage at the incivility of public discourse at the moment. That's a sign of our maturity as well because we weren't so outraged about it years ago. Perhaps that's the, the difference. So perhaps it isn't all doom and gloom. Perhaps if we stand back a bit, actually, there are some positive signs out there as well.